All right, well, another two knives has showed up. I do have some others here coming. Uh, you can tell these are probably going to be two cents. Yeah, they are. Okay. There we go. Two of those guys. Great. Yeah, I'm using this one. I did fail to mention it. Hopefully I remember to put the, uh, the text kind of up here in the last video. But yeah, this integral is known as the Silverback, uh, the TS-195. Well, this one feels a lot smaller than the other one. So let's go ahead and give this a little go here. Okay, yeah, this one's really, really weird looking. All right, we have a little loop thing. So we got a front flipper here. This is, uh, well, that's a different branding, but uh, man, it's still there. That's a night morning design. Flip this guy open. It's going to be a, uh, a really, really small one. Kind of like the uh, the couple that uh, Weistart have done. But yeah, this is a very much different. Fairly thick for the uh, the micarta they're using on this. And yeah, it is their uh, their more recent canvas uh, style micarta rather than the uh, the old funky stuff. Uh, yeah, this is a. Uh, it's a steel liner, but we do have uh, titanium on the outsides here. Absolutely no um, lock bar relief or anything like that. This one's uh, kind of difficult to uh, close, but yeah, we got a little compound grind here, uh, hollow for that, and uh, actually curves way far back before we get here. And this is much much thicker, so. Um, uh, when I'm sharpening something like this, uh, I do need to, uh, or uh, reprofiling or something like that. This, uh, these guys here, the uh, the thicker tips, usually need like another five degrees on um, on the flats for them to look anything, you know, similar. So uh, yeah, that's that's all right. These aren't exactly my uh, my favorite blade types or anything like that, but this one is a little bit more interesting than the other Y-Start ones. However, no pocket clip. So, yeah, that's a little interesting. I guess a little bit more like the uh, the TS, uh, what was that, the, not the 66, the uh, 69, I'm guessing? The, uh, the, the G10 one, that was a fairly long Tonto guy, but doesn't have a clip. But, all right. Kind of an interesting one. If I didn't mention it uh, vocally yet, this is the TS-143. And the other one. Wow, this is heavy. Oh, I bet I know. Yeah. Okay, this is a long design. Yeah, this is a bit of a serious knife. This one, uh, also, no pocket clip on. Um, I've seen uh, some of his uh, Instagram stuff where he actually carries this in a... Uh, tactical kind of pouch or something like that but uh kerblam yeah this is a uh, a big old nasty blade not quite as uh crazy as the uh that other kind of a, a blacked uh one that has like the uh the 5.1 millimeter blade stock this has the uh, thumb studs that uh are on a couple of uh knives that i'm generally not all that much of a fan of because it doesn't have any um grip on the uh the sides of them they're uh they're super smooth uh i would much more prefer to uh, have some sort of uh you know jimping or um notches or something like that something to give me a little bit to uh, hold on to here but yeah this is a ts394 so this is now the uh the highest number knife that i i think i have from them there's a finger trial. It's uh, maybe just a tad small for me, but still, this is much larger of a finger trial than um, than uh, Moz One or uh, Night Morning end up doing. So you know, unless you have um, you know XL hands like I do, then uh, this guy is going to be pretty good to go for uh, that finger trial there. We don't really have much in the way of lock bar access. These are uh, titanium. Uh, uh, subframe, I suppose you would call that, uh, because we do have uh, G10 going on the top here. This one's green. Uh, I do think they also have a black one, 
But uh, other than that, they're exactly the same. Yep, blade's nice and uh, protected in there. We got a little uh, lanyard loop that's integrated into the uh, the backspacer in the back there. It's kind of my favorite way for uh, for knives uh, to have a, a, a lanyard loop is when I don't have to have a hole drilled in it if I don't want. Internal uh, lock bar relief. Interesting. They uh, they do that a little bit more often on um, on their uh, subframe locks than they do on their standard frame locks. But yeah. this uh, frag pattern is uh, really really grippy, so that's great. It's got plenty of throw for uh, getting that nice meaty grip on there. Um, and if your hand does uh, you know stick off the back or something like that then uh, you should probably pursue a career with the NFL because they, they need people with larger <laughs> hands than I'd have. Uh, and that's about the only way that this particular knife is not going to fit in your hand. This uh, hoodie kind of thing looks really flowery. It's basically a Studio Ghibli thing. It's got, I don't know, Totoro and Cat Bus and stuff like that. But it's mostly just green forest stuff on the on the arms it's nice and colorful so uh, it gets a, a, a decent amount of attention and it doesn't really have much of a lining so i don't have to worry about it being actually uh, super warm because well it's starting to get to winter here let's see the fuller yeah you can absolutely deploy that uh, i use my index finger there but that doesn't stop you from uh being able to use your index finger for it and uh, I suppose you could slow roll it open, but you also have the thumb stud to be able to do the exact same thing. Really do like that blade shape. Uh, you know, it's basically a standard spear kind of thing. Oh, that's something I didn't really notice until now. Uh, the pivot for this guy is actually underneath the, uh, the scales here. Obviously, it still has one. The knife does uh, open and close, but... Uh, yeah, it's a little interesting. I've seen uh, Boker do that on a couple of them, like the Urban Trapper and uh, stuff like that. But uh, not on a, uh, a super large knife like this. Kind of would be a little interesting for, I don't know, making sure that the, uh, the pivot stays put or something like that. I can't really say that it's going to reject dirt and grime all that much more because, well, we have a uh, fully exposed uh, detent thing there. So that's easy enough for that to uh, drag grit and grime back in there. But at least it's not going to be right up at those. We have an external blade stop pin on here. Super, super thick. So that's good. The uh, the thick ones uh, that they end up using on um, their, uh, their button lock uh, knives a little bit more often than not. I've been having some uh, bad luck with some uh, button lock knives <laughs> recently. Uh, and I don't know if it maybe has something to do with like um, changing temperatures from the season or something like that. But there's been a few of them that have seized up. Um, there was a send cut. Uh, there was also the uh, the the uh, Kaiser Tazer K button lock, but uh, that was able to be freed just by um, loosening one of the uh, the screws there or something like that. But yeah, I've I've been having some uh, trouble with a lot of them jamming up recently. Kind of annoying, and they weren't even the ones that I bought that were uh, considered broke that uh, I opened up a while back. These were uh, other ones, but uh, all right, yeah, that was a, a digression. This has probably gone on too long. I got some more knives on the way, of course, I always do, but uh, that's going to do it for now. We got uh, the 394 here, and what is this guy, the 147? 143. 147 is the other small one. Okay, cool. That's what I got for now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, catch you when I get some of the others in. Spooky, scary opening. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, I got some Halloween-style nails going on. It's about a week away from Halloween, so I figured it was uh, fun. Anyway, I got a couple of knives here. At least I think this is a knife. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But uh, this one I certainly know is, I guess for an unboxing, I'll use the, uh, the Kaiser Squidward. Why not? I haven't pulled this guy out in a while. So, man, yeah, we got a Tucson going on here. I'll just set that one over to the side. This is one that I've had my eyes on for uh, quite some time, but... Uh, 
Until recently, I just really hadn't uh, ended up picking it up. But I have now. There's that. This one's got some goopinatorial fluids on it. <laughs> All right, here we are. Let's go ahead and put the Squidward away for the moment. And open this guy up. This is the TS-88. I'm not seeing the number on there, but that is what it is. This is uh, fairly similar. At least I do believe so, but yeah. yeah. To the TS-16. Uh, they also do make a titanium uh, and M390 version of the TS-16. I don't have it. But uh, you can see this is basically an identical blade, um, which is pretty much kind of what I thought. But that uh, really, really nails it. Uh, yeah, this one has an M390 blade. It's still just as thick as ever. Uh, what makes this one different is um, its construction is a tenon and mortise. Uh, rather than using screws, everything can be uh, kind of disassembled there's no screws or anything like that going on in here i don't necessarily know exactly how to do that yet but uh <laughs> there you go uh i do like the handle um quite a bit i like the uh kind of scalloped out portion there in the middle that uh ends up working out super nice and hey this one actually has um scalloped shoulders on it so it is a little bit more comfortable in general than uh at least the uh the g10 version of the ts16 yeah, centering's all sorts of nice. We got uh, a bit of a uh, hole there. You can probably use that as a lanyard uh, hole. Yeah, of course. So there's definitely that. If you're not familiar with uh, the little uh, deeper groove that they have on both sides of those, uh, they are designed to accept uh, little tritium uh, vial things, the little guys that uh, glow in the dark there. Pretty interesting. Uh, we don't really have lock bar uh, crazy access, but it is scalloped. And because this blade stock is uh, quite thick, it's at least 3.8, if not 4 millimeters. Uh, real easy to close. Action's pretty decent on it. I can definitely get that a little bit better, but it is... Um, I definitely don't feel any uh, grinding or anything like that from uh, different finishes or... Stuff like that rubbing up against the uh, the ball bearing in there. So, yeah, this thing is uh, pretty sweet. I will uh, enjoy quite thoroughly figuring out how to uh, actually disassemble this dang thing and uh, take a look on the inside of it. Uh, yeah, and the blade is uh, decently in there, so... Uh, no worry about a little snaggle tooth going on there, but uh, yeah, cool. I've been looking at this one uh, for probably a year or two on uh, on eBay, and it just uh, always seemed to get up a little bit more. And then now, I guess I'm a little bit more willing to uh, spend some more money on them. But uh, yeah. Uh, all right, so let's see what's going on here. Are you a knife? You are a knife. Oh, that actually, did come with something there. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and a, a, a thing, I guess. <laughs> okay, so this is a mercenary knife. And it's very, very minimalist. This is um, 14C28N. It, uh, it is quite slick with um, pecking grease at the moment. This is one of the first uh, mercenary knives, I think, that I've got that uh, didn't have just a... Uh, A, uh, a fully um, shrink-wrapped or uh, vacuum-sealed kind of package going on there. But, yes, this one, I don't know the guy's signature. I did ask uh, Masanari, um on Instagram uh, who actually designed it, and they said it was, you know, it was a newer Chinese um, uh, designer, but... Still, with that, they didn't actually give me the, uh, the name for them, unfortunately. So, uh, I still need to figure that out. But, uh, yeah, this is a, a very, very bare-bones 
knife with a 14C28N. Glad to see some stuff going on there. We got a little bit of a divot there that uh, can certainly help out with um, doing some of that. It also has a basically drop point basically at the very, very end of it. But, uh, yeah, you can also um, easily sidle up there if you're uh, doing something, you know, probably uh, hunting related, like doing some caping or uh, skinning or something like that, where you don't really want that tip absolutely exposed. So you can uh, kind of cover that up so you can use the belly more safely. Um, and then we got the uh, little uh, folded over taco style. Um I'm not going to call it Kydex. I, I highly doubt that it actually is, but uh, some sort of a uh, vacuum sealed something or other. And it also has that uh, kind of carbon fiber look to it. Uh, what I didn't know is that it came with a little bit of paracord uh, in case you wanted to make your own handle. Uh, I <laughs> thought accordingly and uh, decided that uh, I was going to get some paracord myself. Uh, so the stuff that I ended up getting... Uh, did I need type four that, uh, ends up holding 750 pounds? No, but this was uh purple, which, Hey, I'm all about that. And, uh, Hey, it's made in Ukraine. I kind of appreciated that. So yeah, I got a whole bunch of uh paracord here to, uh, attempt to wrap a handle. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing with that yet, but, uh, I'm guessing that, uh, this guy here might, uh, assist in that in some way by being able to. I don't know. I, like I said, I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing for doing the wrap on the handle, but uh, happy to actually uh, learn that a little bit. All righty. So I thought I was going to get uh, some more knives in, but uh, it looks like uh, probably quite a few of them were uh, delayed until tomorrow or the next day or something like that. So I will pick this up then. Until then, I'll catch you later. Submitted for your approval. Three more knives. But first... I am. I got me some Uggs. And, uh, <laughs> they can say that this color is tangerine all day long. We all know this is pumpkin spice color. Yeah, USA 15. My feet are not small, and that makes it really irritating to try and find things that actually fit. Okay, anyway, rant over. <laughs> we got three knives, all in uh, little yellow envelopes, because they use the, uh, the same distributor but i do believe this one is six leaf and uh these two are going to be tucson uh i might as well use this little mercenary fixed blade guy here because uh i just finished sharpening that up this thing took a wicked edge it's it's really like a scalpel something uh that makes me happy but uh okay let's see yes we do have this six leaf here uh, Six Leaf has just recently come out with a new model, or at least um, is available for order, uh, called the SL20. It's another kind of a budget knife. However, that is, of course, not this one. This is uh, the SL16. Uh, hold on, actually, one moment here. All right, yeah, sorry for that uh, little edit there. Uh, just kind of had a thought on this. This is a six leaf, um, little bot and lock uh, from Rattlesnake, M390 steel, titanium handle, all that sort of good stuff. And this is a mercenary knife, also from um, uh, Rattlesnake Design. Fairly similar as far as the uh, the blades go. They're both uh, bead blasted. A little bit of a different finish uh, on the titaniums there. Both of them feel pretty good. But uh, here's the thing. This one, taller blade. Kind of like that. Not going to lie at all about something like that. Uh, but this is a three-finger knife. 
at least for me, maybe if you got uh, some uh, small sized hands or something like that, uh, maybe to the smaller side of normal, you can get a full four finger grip on there. But uh, same kind of blade length. Whereas uh, this one, even from uh, back where the uh, the button is, I can get a comfortable four finger grip on there. And you can, of course, choke up. So uh, between the two of them, uh, I do kind of like the overall blade shape uh, that this uh, six leaf has, but I do think the handle is uh, vastly superior on the uh, the uh, Masanari. What is this? The MK03. But yeah, still very very similar. Um, I've been kind of watching these. One went up for auction, and I think I got it for uh, just under a hundred bucks, which was all right because I think they usually list for. Uh, 115 to 130, somewhere right around there or something like that. So I felt like I was getting a little bit of a deal there. Um, I am still just a little tiny bit wary of uh, button locks from um, from Six Leaf because the other one that I have, I uh, did a video on that a while back, uh, do, does have a tendency to uh, fail. And it's possible that um, there's a burr or something else, uh, maybe some tolerance problems with the, uh, the button so it's not fully... Uh, disengaging on my particular model. At least that's what I've seen in uh, some of the comments that uh, others have had a little bit better luck. But, um, you know, in general, uh, I do have a lot better luck with uh, button locks that are on, you know, titanium. So, like, the ones I end up getting from uh, Tucson and stuff like that. Uh, the ones that I've gotten from uh, Civivi and um, Kaiser and Sencut, uh, they're all just a little... Weird and finicky, especially now that uh, the weather has kind of uh, changed on me. Uh, now that it's getting to uh, much colder weather, uh, I seem to have a little bit more jamming problems. And I'm wondering if that's just um, steel liners kind of uh, uh, moving a little bit out of uh, their standard tolerance where they were uh, built or something like that that might cause them to maybe slightly warp enough to uh, actually catch the button on there. I'm not quite sure. But, uh, all right, yeah, enough of that. I, I'll talk about that some other time, probably in a different video. But we got a couple of Tucson's here. Aha, this is a new one. And, unless I'm mistaken, the day I'm opening this up, I saw them become available on White Mountain Nights. So if you don't want to wait nearly as long as me. And you uh, absolutely adore this design, then you can go for it. I think this is a Raihi design. We got some interesting titanium thumb pads. Uh, usually these things don't end up working out super, super great for me. Uh, yes, it is a Raihi design. This is a TS-368. Of course, it's in D2. However, I have seen, uh, at least very, very recently, uh, as in like the last few days... Uh, more Tucson models come up in uh, 14C28N. There was another Raihi uh, Tonto-ish kind of design, the one with the tan micarta in there. They've come out with a 14C28N variant of that, so that's cool to see. Um, and a couple other models that are uh, coming out now, too. But none of them are this. This looks to have just the slightest bit of recurve going on with it. Action's pretty darn great on it. Um, yeah, these uh, these thumb things uh, certainly lend themselves to a slow roll open. That is for sure. Um, I'm so much more used to uh, a thumb deployment where I can, you know, get your thumb right behind it and push out. Uh, trying to push out away from the uh, the handle always just feels a little awkward to me. And that's kind of what uh, you would need to do to uh, try to deploy this thing with a thumb flick in this particular case. But if you want to slow roll that open with a thumb, right or left-handed, that works super, super great on it. Uh, we don't really have much in the way of a lock bar um, uh, access or anything like that. It's uh, fairly, fairly down in there. Uh, interesting that there's a little bit of coloration on the... Uh, the milled cutting or non-finished portion of the titanium on that one. At least titanium doesn't really burn anywhere near the same that uh, 
steel does so i don't really have any worries about that uh not too bad in the hand i'm not super crazy about the uh the crazy point that it's got going out here um in this particular case with my hand uh it actually makes me feel the pocket clip quite a bit as well as it's uh, a little pointy and um oh that's uh something else i'm seeing here we don't even really have a ramp with this uh this pocket clip it just kind of starts uh and that's well obviously i haven't tried it because i just opened it up but i do assume that's going to make this thing really challenging to get into a pocket obviously not out but uh you know in there's no ramp so it's just kind of butt up against that and there's nothing to uh, help move that out of the way so that's a little unfortunate not exactly my favorite kind of thing here but yeah for the most part we have kind of a uh, uh high saber grind that uh, moves up towards the uh, the tip there uh not a compound grind for a tanto which uh you know you don't see too many of those uh, for me personally, I do kind of, uh, prefer that over the hollow grinds, especially Tucson's hollow grinds that are mostly way too thick. Um, but I mean, that's probably because they're erring on the fact that, uh, almost all of their blades are super, super thick. So if they were to do a hollow grind on it, well, they still have to uh, keep that thickness up somewhere for some particular reason. I don't know. There's a couple of them that, uh, that don't, I like the, uh, but the Mazwan Mokhtar and the uh, the Night Morning uh, Warncliffs that had just recently come out um, have a little bit thinner things going on there. But uh, yeah, I have to say this isn't exactly my uh, my absolute favorite, uh, even out of uh, the Raihi designs. We do have um, a sharpening choil on here, but the plunge grind ends way, 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 way up there. So... Um, yeah, more likely than not, and once you're uh, sharpening this guy, uh, it's going to get a little bit of a smile going on there. Of course, that does depend on exactly how you sharpen and all that sort of stuff, how slow and meticulous and everything. But, hey, there we go. There's the, uh, there's the that. And then we have this one, which is a reissue. And this is uh, the 81, I want to say. Pretty sure it's the 81. suppose we'll find out once it gets open here. Cool, it doesn't have a printer on there. But I can easily find it. <laughs> because I own the budget model. So yes, this is the 81. Uh, however, this is the titanium frame lock variant of it or sub frame lock bolster lock whatever the hell you actually want to call it and this one has uh basically it looks like a shred carbon fiber going on in there yeah it is uh milled with a whole bunch of lines going on in there so it does play with the light a little bit differently but that doesn't quite look like their uh their standard basket weave kind of stuff there uh this one is m390 of course instead of um the is this 14c or d2 this one's d2 okay uh they have also released one of these uh long ago that uh had essentially a, a bone uh inserts there uh i'm always a little wary of um uh using natural bone on um uh, more modern folders, you know, the ones that actually have screw together construction because you can easily split and crack those uh, scales by uh, tightening those down just a little bit too much. And it really doesn't take all that much because they're, uh, they're a much harder material. So more like glass where, uh, you know, it's so hard that it doesn't bend or it's not malleable at all. It'll just start to split and crack on you. But, uh, yeah, the action on this thing, super great compared to, uh, compared to the, uh, the, the old, um, well, I guess Halloween colors that we got going on here. Same weird crenellations we got going on on the backside. Different pocket clip. We have a, a large ceramic ball. Uh, I only have a couple others like that. I do like them, but, uh, I did buy one, uh, for, 
a friend a um, couple years back. I think it was two years ago. Maybe it was last year. But uh, either way, somehow they ended up losing the uh, the ceramic ball in there. The pocket clip still works fine. And uh, I haven't really personally run into any of those troubles. But I suppose there's some anecdotal evidence that uh, some problems like that can happen. Blade is nice and tucked up in there. So uh, no problems with uh, worrying about me cutting myself. That little triangle thing here, where it's not fully through like the uh, the D2 one is, uh, way too far up towards the pivot uh, to really be much in the way of a, a useful deployment, especially with the uh, the detent being uh, fairly crisp on this one. It's uh, it's pretty difficult to fail it though. I will give it that. So that's neat. Uh, we do have a, a sharpening choil here, but just like the other one I was just looking at. Uh, the, uh, the plunge grind basically ends right at that blade edge there. So yeah, you're going to have to be careful with this one as well. But this is, uh, one of Wong's, uh, many great, uh, EDC kind of carries. Um, you know, this, this 81 along with the, uh, the 89 and, uh, what the 127, uh, really kind of hit up there on a lot of people's like bang for the buck EDC beater knives. You really can't go wrong with any of them. And this one's uh, you know, just a little bit different, a little bit uh, special. And, uh, of course, this is a little new. Um, and I'm always uh, appreciative of getting a hold of a, uh, a newer Tucson model with uh, M390. As, uh, you know, uh, they seem to have, at least in my cutting uh, test experiments and all that sort of stuff, really, really improved um how much their uh, their M390 works uh, over probably the last year, maybe 18 months, but there was a couple of them in there, like the um, the 328 Warlock that was uh, an absolute dog. Uh, it it basically uh, ended up cutting like 12C27, unfortunately. But all the rest of them that I've gotten new um, have done amazing things, especially the uh, the TS-303 button lock that uh, I've done a little bit of a cut testing and reporting back on that. And it's um, basically the uh, the knife that's held the edge, just the, its edge the longest uh, through all of that uh, rope cutting stuff. However, as I'm saying that, I I think I've said it in the, uh, the comments or something like that. Uh, whereas, yeah, I do cut uh, twisted sisal rope. This is uh, basically 9.54 millimeter. Hey, we, uh, we use freedom units here, so uh, I can't really find a 10 millimeter one to uh, exactly match um, uh, Pete from Cedric and Ada's channel, uh, his ones, but it does a lot of that. However, that stuff isn't uh, ridiculously hard, so I think running some steels a little bit softer uh, and especially because, you know, a lot of the powder metallurgy steels that I do, uh, I end up reprofiling to, uh, 15 degrees behind the edge. So that giving it uh, a nice thin one there. And also it's a little bit softer. So the, uh, the steel has just a little bit more malleability that might, um, end up contributing to how well those things are uh, performing specifically with those, uh, with those rope cutting tests and stuff like that. Whereas, uh, you get something crazy, crazy hard. Um, you can, uh, have some problems with a, a thin edge, uh, chipping out. And that would obviously have uh, tremendous problems being able to, uh, cut through standard paper. Like, uh, you know, it's just your standard printer paper or something like that, that I use to uh, gauge when a knife has gotten dull. You know, obviously it's still got a working edge. Anyway, I don't know. This is, going on way too dang long. So yeah, I'm liking that. Uh, I really do like the, uh, all of the, uh, the milling that we got going on here. It's uh, a little bit more involved, um, than just the, uh, the standard one here, even though this one's still a nice and attractive blade. <clears throat> well, all right. So there was the uh, TS-81 uh, M390 with uh, carbon fiber. We got the TS-368 here. And then here we are. We got the six leaf uh, SL-16. That is uh, fairly similar to the uh, Mossonary uh, MK-03. 
from the same designer. So, hey, you know, I mean, that certainly makes sense. This guy kind of looks like a, a stubby version, maybe, of the uh, Civivi Conspirator or something like that. <laughs> and or the uh, the Voltaic that came out a little bit afterwards that uh, kind of has that same blade shape. Anyway, all right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here. Uh, I do have some more knives definitely on the way. Some more Tucson's. And uh, uh, I think I got a Petrified Fish. Uh, another Mocenary. Um, and I don't remember possibly what else. Um, really hoping to get a hold of uh, the uh, the Kaiser Escort. Um, it's their uh, clutch lock or their version of the access lock. But uh, there's a variant of it in uh, red rich light that really looks interesting to me. So uh, I hope I get that uh, whenever it releases, which is coming soon, according to their side at the moment. But... Anyway, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. And subscribe, please. One super quick note of something that I kind of missed when uh, taking a look at this guy that I do want to point out sooner rather than later here. Um, because of the bead blast, you can see this plunge grind is brutal. It, uh, it ends basically like a, a third of an inch into the blade there. So, uh, yeah, be very, very careful if you're trying to sharpen that, if you don't want uh, all of this area to just look hilarious and banged up. And you will see every single one of those banged up pieces because this is a, a bead blast finished edge, which, uh, well, it's not super great for corrosion, but no, it's in 390 so it's uh, very, very good at corrosion resistance anyway. All right, back to the normal one.